join me today for our time. I've been looking forward to this lesson and looking forward to being with you again. And so we're going to get started and you know what we like to do first. We like to sing and so let's clap, snap, and we're going to make dot art today. So let's dot. You ready? Here we go. I'm ready to get moving a little bit. Maybe you're going to move more than me, though. <laughs> Here we go. I think I feel like clapping. So clapping's what I do. I think I feel like clapping. I'm clapping why don't you. Clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap. Okay. Now we're going to snap. You ready? I'm not a very good snapper, but I can have fun. I think I feel like snapping. So snapping's what I do. I think I feel like snapping. I'm snapping why don't you? Snap, snap, snap. Snap, snap, snap. Snap, snap, snap. Snap, snap, snap. So we're going to use a little cotton swabs of dots so you can just pretend to dot you can make dots around in the air here we go I think I feel like dotting so dotting's what I do I think I feel like dotting I'm dotting and why don't you dot 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 oh boy so excited to get started making our project today. So let's, but I don't think I want to sing again, so we're going <laughs> to stop it there. Let's look at what we need for our supplies today. You will need craft paints or acrylic paints, paper, cotton swabs, and a plate or tray to put your paint on. And then for younger artists, you might like to use some dot markers. So, um, you know, a few lessons ago, we talked about traditional art around the world, and we talked about kente cloth from Africa, and we talked about the traditional gardens of Japan and the beautiful sand designs that they often make. Well, today we're going to talk about another kind of traditional art that is so interesting and so beautiful. I know it's going to be so much fun to learn about this type of art and also to create a, an art project today in the spirit of that art. So this art is called Aboriginal Dot Art. And um, it is an art that is special to a group of indigenous people in Australia. And indigenous is just a cool word that means they were the first people that lived there. So um, these uh, people um, actually had art for, for, you know, a long, long time. But this particular kind of art just began in the 1970s when a teacher there who was uh, working with children of families who had been displaced. Now that means, displaced means they'd been made to leave their homes. So this teacher noticed that the men in this group would tell stories and as they told stories, they would write in the sand or in the dirt and draw pictures to go with their stories. So um, the teacher thought that if they could um, make these pictures into um, paintings rather than just on the ground that could be blown away or scuffed away with feet, you know, when people left, then that would be a way for them to keep their stories to pass on to their children and grandchildren and to future generations because they didn't have a written language. So all of their traditions, their beliefs, uh, their history was passed along through these stories that they shared. So you can see in this first picture an example of um, an artist, an Aboriginal artist, who was uh, writing in the sand as he told a story. And I also have another picture here for you to see how 
they would uh, draw traditionally and they would draw as they told the stories. So uh, then he provided acrylic paints and at first they uh, did a lot of paintings on bark or just different things, uh, natural materials, but uh, the acrylic paints were a way to preserve the art and to, to share it. But um, many things they told in the stories, they really didn't want other people to know about. It was just special and private to them. So this, the dot art became a way to share their stories in a way that they would understand, but other people wouldn't really know the meaning of the symbols that they put in their dot art. Well, um, I think today when we do this, it might be fun to use this traditional art and the style of the traditional art and to maybe make this into something that would go with a tradition that we have here in the United States. In just a few days, it's going to be a holiday that we call Mother's Day when we celebrate mothers and um, say nice things to them and give them cards and, and give them extra hugs. And um, so, this might be a project that you might like to make into a card or a picture for your mom for Mother's Day or someone else that you love, uh, a grandma or an aunt, someone that you love and would like to uh, celebrate her and give her something special. I found uh, this morning, I was looking through some things and I found some things and this is why I thought it would be a uh, fun for you to make a card or a picture for your uh, your mom because this is something I found that one of my children made for me um, many years ago because she looks like her art look work looks like she was might have been about five and this was a birthday card she made for me but it's so special because it's something that she made and gave to me I also found a note from one of my sons that was written over 25 years ago and when I read it, I kind of laughed, but it really made my heart happy too because he said, Mom, thanks for always being there to do all the work that mothers have to do and be all the things that mothers have to be. I love you and I hope you have a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> so even though this was written over 25 years ago, it still <laughs> makes me happy. And uh, so whatever, if you write a note to your mom or give her a card and just sign your name, make uh, something that you've made, a card or a note, she will always cherish it and it will always make her happy. And this is just a new one I just got this week from one of my grandsons. And he's just learning how to write. So he wrote Mima on there. And this was the, his, his mother told me that this was one of the first words that he's written on his own. So you know I'm going to keep this and cherish this. And um, it will always be a, a special uh, memory and a treasure for me. So let's look at some ideas about how you can make dot art. Let's look at some examples of uh, some dot art is so beautiful and varied. And each artist has their own style. Some put the dots separate, and you can see each individual dot. Some artists bunch the dots together, and you can even make a solid background. Some, some artists make the dots to outline shapes in their uh, artwork, and some fill in shapes with the dots. Uh, some make big dots, some make small dots. Uh, some even make dots within dots. So there is no limit to the, to the variety and the style that you can do your dots. It's just up to you and that will, that will be what will make it so special and fun. I want to show you an idea that you might consider doing if you um, want to make a card for your, for your mom or for someone you love. You might draw around your hand and if you can't do it yourself, you might have uh, somebody do it for you. I know drawing around hands is something that is really fun um, for kids to do. And it's fun to see what size your hand is and how it's going to change and grow. But um, if you, you could begin by drawing around your hand. Now, uh, it, you remember I said that Aboriginal dot art 
told a story. When you, when you see a painting or a picture, it always tells a story. Now, the story may have a hidden meaning for um, uh, just somebody who's just looking at the picture, but for the person who made it and for the person uh, in, that, in that people group or in that family, they will understand what that picture means. So if you made a picture of your hand, what would be some way to convey meaning with your hand that would be meaningful to your mom? Can you think of some way that would be meaningful? Did you see how I just dipped the Q-tip barely in the paint? You might want to experiment with this when you start. If you get too too far into the paint, it might make a big blob. But, you know, you might be an artist who wants to make big dots, and that would be fine. So I'm just going to outline the hand. You could also just uh, draw your hand print lightly and then make the outline of your hand with dots. I just wanted you to see the handprint better, so that's why I drew around it with a marker. But I am going to outline the hand like this. So something that I think would have symbolic meaning would be a heart shape. So if I put a heart shape here, What would that what would that heart mean? What do you think that could mean to somebody who you love? Could it mean I love you? Can you see it? It would it would probably have special meaning to someone, wouldn't it? And then you know you can go around again. And as you notice, if I just keep going, the paint gets lighter and lighter, but you may like the way that looks. You may want to dip your cotton swab in a lot or just let it keep going until it kind of gets real faded. And you know, you could also add dots around the outside of the hand. You know, there's just no limit to the possibilities of what you could do with your painting. Let me try a different color. You might think of some other symbols that you might like to put on here that would have a special meaning to your family. colors that you like, you know, any, any combination of colors is going to make it uniquely yours and uniquely, uniquely special. When you're finished, you know, you could also um, cut out a, a shape to make a card or you could leave it the whole page. So this be a very very beautiful artwork and at the same time something that has a lot of special meaning to someone you love and you can write a note on the back or you could write it on the front but you know the one important thing to always remember somewhere be sure to put your name and the date that you did it so just like that note from my from my son, I I know when he did that because he we had the date on it. So this is one idea, and I just started, didn't I? There's so much, many ideas, and so much more that you could do with it. But I'm going to tear this off, and let's just talk about if you would like to make a design, like some uh, some that maybe we saw that maybe you might want to have a. a have it represent a story or some special event in your family. Let's look at um, one more picture of, of um, dot art that I think is really interesting. What do you think this picture 
might be representing. Well, it, it is in Aboriginal art symbols. It, this can represent a rainbow or a cloud. So even though it's what we call abstract art, it uh, still is, has symbolic, uh, sim the symbols in it have special meaning, and um, so it's, it's a lovely, colorful example of um, dot art. So you might want to just start out by making some lines with dots, of course. <laughs> And um, sometimes you might choose a color. Let's try something different here. Let's see what would happen if we put it on a piece of colored paper. How would that change the look of the art that we're doing? You might think about using colored paper for your background because if you're using acrylic paints, which is what craft paints are, your paint is going to show up. Mm, I have an idea for my painting, what I want to call it. So I'm going to start out with these dots. red looks on this yellow. This looks completely different, doesn't it, than the ones that we did on the white paper. This is so much fun. And you know, however you choose to do it, it's going to be so cool anything you choose to do in art you can do just whatever you think of with your imagination the yellow doesn't show up real well on here does it actually I can see it but you might not be able to see it very well on the screen so if if I was doing it um, you know it would it would still show up if somebody was just looking at it you know what, um, I think that I would call this, <laughs> I think I might call it the paths of life. Because, you know, when we start out, we can choose our path. And often the path we choose depends on where, of course it depends on where we end up, doesn't it? <laughs> but we have lots of choices in how we live our life. And, and I thought this kind of reminded me of different paths that a person might take. I could connect it probably. Maybe I should connect it here if that's what I want to call it. You could cut across and go that way. <laughs> but this is just the beginning, of course, of a painting and I can't wait to see how you do your painting and what you do with it. And be sure and share it with me. You can uh, share it on my new uh, Facebook page, Art Time with Mima. And you know I love to see your work. It's always so interesting and creative. And no two are the same because no two kids or people are the same. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and let you keep dotting, dotting, dotting. <laughs> and uh, I didn't show you uh, in a sample today, but... Um, you may have dot markers, and as you might want to make big dots. And dot markers are great for making pictures with if you want to make bigger dots. So this might be something you would want to do. And whether you're a young younger artist or an older artist, either way, you know, dot markers are great fun. And then you don't have to have the you know the extra paint, and you're going to be able just to keep dotting because the paint's going to be coming out of the tube. So that might be another way that you might like to make your dot art. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you do. And now it's time to sing my goodbye song. And 
I just want to thank you for joining me. This has been such a fun lesson, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you do. I always look forward to art time. So let's sing along together if you know the words. Every day is a new beginning. At least that's what they say. Every day is a new beginning. So what will you do today? Will you say a kind word? Will you paint with your heart? Will you listen to a bird? Will you make a new start? There's no end to what you can do with the brand new page. Could you talk to a friend? Could you dance for a while? Could you play a fun game? Could you give me a smile? There's no end to what you can do with this brand new day. There's no end to what you can do with this brand new day. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I had so much fun with you today, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. But until then, bye-bye. Thank you.